Nicknamed the Emerald City, Seattle may be the most beautiful city in the whole country. I used to live in Seattle, and my time there really sparked my passion for learning about cities. In this series, I briefly cover a city's history, population, skyline, as well as a few things that make that city unique. Now, let's meet Seattle. I always like to start by exploring how a city wound up being where it is today. Seattle is located on an isthmus between Lake Washington and the Puget Sound, making it one of only two major U.S. cities situated on an isthmus, the other being Madison, Wisconsin. The Seattle area has been inhabited for thousands of years, and the name Seattle was actually the name of the chief of the Duwamish tribe during the time of European settlement in 1851. Similar to its Canadian neighbor city of Vancouver, Seattle was initially a logging town. In 1861, the University of Washington was established in Seattle, which was a very significant moment for the future development of the city. The arrival of the railroad led to Seattle replacing San Francisco as the primary transportation point for northern Pacific trade, which resulted in explosive growth. The city's population went from around 3,500 in 1880 to over 80,000 just 20 years later. Today, Seattle has one of the busiest container ports in all of North America, and the city has grown to have a population of around 750,000. This makes it the 18th largest city in the country. If you've watched many of my other videos, you'll know that I think metro population is a better indicator of a city's true size, and Seattle has a metro population of just over 4 million. This makes it the 15th largest metro in the country, being just smaller than Detroit and larger than Minneapolis. Seattle has the ninth largest economy in the country, and some of the most recognizable companies headquartered in the Seattle metro include Amazon, Boeing, Costco, Microsoft, Starbucks, REI, Nordstrom, and Alaska Airlines. Seattle's metro has just shy of 30 colleges and universities, the most notable being my dad's alma mater, the University of Washington. Call me shallow, but when it comes to cities, I think appearances matter, which is why evaluating a city's skyline is one of my favorite parts of making these videos. Seattle has one of the best skylines in the country. When I made a video on my favorite skylines in North America, Seattle ranked as the fifth best looking skyline on the continent for me. Taking into account the natural beauty surrounding the city, such as the looming Mount Rainier and the Olympic Mountains across the Sound, I think Seattle is the most beautiful city in the country overall. If you took the average height of Seattle's tallest five buildings, Seattle would be ranked as the ninth tallest skyline in the country, being just shorter than Dallas and just taller than Miami. The tallest building in the city is the Columbia Center at 937 feet or 286 meters. It has more floors than any other building west of the Mississippi River. When I lived in Seattle as a child, my dad had a connection that allowed us to go up in the Columbia Center, which was a formative experience for my obsession with cities. When it comes to unique aspects of Seattle, I have to start with the most iconic structure in the skyline, the Space Needle. The Space Needle was built in 1961 for the World's Fair the following year. At 605 feet, it was the tallest structure west of the Mississippi River when it was built. Today, it remains the primary symbol of the city and has an observation deck with a revolving restaurant at the top. The Space Needle is located on a 74-acre arts and tourism center known as Seattle Center, which has several unique museums and attractions. One of the unique museums is the Museum of Pop Culture, which looks unlike any building I'm aware of. Its exterior architecture has been compared to that of a smashed guitar, a dead sea creature, and even hemorrhoids. It was considered one of the world's 10 ugliest buildings by Forbes magazine, but its colliding colors and textures have also been thought of as a good representation of the American rock experience. The interior of the museum features exhibits about science fiction and video games, as well as rock and roll exhibits which include the world's largest collection of artifacts and personal instruments of Jimi Hendrix. Seattle is the number one city in the country for glass blowing art, and at the feet of the Space Needle is the Chihuly Garden and Glass Museum. It showcases glass blown artworks from Dale Chihuly, the largest being the 100 foot long sculpture in the glass house. The Seattle Center also includes the Pacific Science Center, which is one of the best science museums I've personally been to. Another landmark within the Seattle Center is the International Fountain, which is a huge recreational city fountain with a spherical design. 
Seattle has some additional round structures that are worth mentioning, the Amazon Spheres. Nicknamed the Bezos Balls, these spheres are part of Amazon's headquarters and are designed to give employees a way to connect with nature with more than 40,000 plants housed within. Another interesting modern building in downtown is the Seattle Central Library. The American Institute of Architecture ranked the country's favorite buildings, and the Seattle Central Library ranked as the 108th favorite building in the country, only trailing nine other libraries. While on the topic of notable buildings, just north of Seattle is the Boeing Everett Factory, which is the largest building in the world by volume. It was originally built for the construction of Boeing 747s and has a cubic volume of 13.3 million cubic meters, which is 39% larger than the next largest building on the list, Tesla's Gigafactory in Texas. Seattle's metro can also claim the record for the longest floating bridge in the world. The Evergreen Point floating bridge crosses Lake Washington and is 2,350 meters long. Lake Washington can be accessed from the Puget Sound thanks to the Ballard Locks. These locks are the busiest locks in the country for boat traffic. The Ballard Locks are designated as a National Historic Landmark. Seattle has one of the best park systems in the country. My favorite park is Gasworks Park on the north shore of Lake Union. This park is also on the National Register of Historic Places due to it being on the site of the sole remaining coal gasification plant in the country. Gasworks Park still incorporates part of the old plant within the park, which makes it truly unique. Another park worth mentioning is the Olympic Sculpture Park, which is one of the newer parks in Seattle. The park has a nine-acre free sculpture museum as well as a beach on the Puget Sound, making it the largest downtown green space in Seattle. The most quintessential tourist attraction in Seattle is Pike's Place Market. It's the most visited destination in the city with more than 10 million visitors annually. It's one of the oldest continuously operated farmers markets in the country. What puts the market on the map for most people is the Pike's Place Fish Market where they famously throw and catch slippery fish. Just down the ramp from the fish market is another iconic Seattle landmark, the colorful gum wall. It unintentionally started in the 90s and since then has grown piece by piece. It's estimated that over 1 million pieces of gum have been put on the wall since then. Just over a mile south of Pike's Place are the two major sports stadiums, Lumen Field and T-Mobile Park, homes of the Seahawks and Mariners respectively. Lumen Field is known for being one of the loudest stadiums in all of sports because of its design that enhances crowd noise. And lastly, I'll mention that one of the things Seattle is best known for is coffee. I'm not a coffee drinker myself, but coffee certainly is a large part of the identity of the city. Well, that wraps up my video about Seattle. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and check out some of my other videos about cities. Thanks for watching.